Before Auntie Maxine, before Barack, and before Kamala Harris, there was Shirley Chisholm. I stand before you today as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. Shirley Anita St. Hill Chisholm was a Brooklyn native with West Indian roots. She attended Brooklyn College and Columbia University, where she earned a master's degree in elementary education. First a teacher, then a daycare center director, Chisholm decided to take a crack at public service and serve two terms in the New York State Legislature. She made history in 1968 when she became the first black woman to be elected to the U.S. Congress representing the 12th Congressional District of Brooklyn. Met star stand up! Chisholm was also a founding member of both the Congressional Black Caucus and the Congressional Women's Caucus. But Our Lady had her sights set on the highest office in the country. In January 1972, Shirley Chisholm announced her run for presidency and would become the first African-American woman from any major party to do so. I am not the candidate of black America, although I am black and proud. I am not the candidate of the women's movement of this country, although I am a woman, and I'm equally proud of that. I am the candidate of the people of America. She ran during a crazy time in American history. Malcolm X, MLK, and Bobby Kennedy had all been assassinated. The civil rights movement had technically ended, but it's not like black and brown folks weren't still fighting for equality. And Shirley Chisholm was like, I'm here for it. The United States Constitution stipulates that anyone that is 35 years of age or over and is a natural born citizen can run for the presidency. All of us meet that criteria, the people will make a decision. This woman was out here snatching wigs and toupees before we even had a name for it. And she had to be tough because it was dangerous on the campaign trail. During the 72 campaign, fellow Democratic presidential candidate George Wallace was shot five times and left paralyzed from the waist down. Chisholm was also a target. She was attacked three times physically over the course of her presidential campaign, and once by a person carrying a 10-inch knife. Speaking of being stabbed in the back, Feminists and black members of Congress were split over Chisholm. The idea of having a black woman president in 1972 was just too much for them and voters. So after fighting the good fight and with 152 delegates at the Democratic National Convention, she lost the nomination to George McGovern, who would go on to lose to Richard Nixon. And we all know how that ended. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Chisholm passed away in 2005, but her legacy lives on. In 2014, she was honored with a forever stamp, and in 2015, Chisholm posthumously became the recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. When asked how she'd like to be remembered, she had an answer. I'd like them to say that Shirley Chisholm has had guts. And I'm proud to say it, Shirley Chisholm had guts. It was a revolutionary act for a black woman from Brooklyn to run for president in 1972. A fearless, outspoken catalyst of change, Chisholm was unbought and unbossed. Shirley Chisholm, we salute you.